Hello everyone, I'm Frank Tony, the Scarred Ghost. Today I'm going to give you some exclusive first-hand impressions on the Vivo Vision. What is Vivo Vision? Vivo is one of the leading smartphone manufacturers. And a few months ago, it announced that it was going to release a mixed reality headset called Vivo Vision. A few days ago, we got more details about this headset, but still not info about the release date or price even if the rumored price is around 1,400 US dollars. But we got something still very interesting. We've announced that in some selected cities in China, it is now possible to try a version of the headset called Vivo Vision Discovery Edition, which is basically a release candidate of the headset that people can try. So to get the taste of the device, be interested in it, and maybe also give feedback to the company. So luckily, I'm currently in China, as you can see from that flag. And thanks to the help of Sinsa from VR AR World, I was able to sneak into a Vivo shop in Beijing and try the headset. So I can give you my impressions about it. So first of all, thanks, Sinsa. Uh, she's organizing an event about VR AR next year in Shanghai. Check the dates in the description of the video. So you can also join that. I will be there as well. But now, Let's get into the demo of the Vivo Vision. So the demo of the Vivo Vision is a bit similar to the demos that happen in the Apple Store. I arrived at the desk. There were uh, two Vivo headsets and shopping clerks that could help me during the demo. First of all, they scanned my face with a headset that was in front of me. Uh, so they could understand which kind of face mask I needed. And the face mask is important because not only for the comfort, but also to guarantee that eye tracking works in the best way possible. Uh, then uh, what they did was ask him if I had eye impairments. Uh, I don't have them, otherwise they could have added some magnetic inserts uh, to the device before giving it to me. And after that, they put the headset on my face, they used the straps on the back to secure it to my head, and basically the demo started. I needed to do the user eye tracking calibration by looking at the various dots uh, with three levels of brightness. Uh, look at my hands, uh, and then I was basically ready to try the device. The demo lasted 37 minutes. They made me try, uh, first of all, the main UI and then some demos, especially videos, photos. That was the main plate, let's say, of the menu, but also some little mixed reality games and applications. Uh, they were very kind, and they also uh, helped me a lot regarding the hygiene of the headset, which is also good. So it was a pleasant experience, in my opinion. The only problem, which I will remark uh, towards the end of this video, is that I don't think there are many compelling applications to uh, entice people to really want this headset, apart from the videos and the photos, which are pretty cool. Okay, so this is how the demo worked. Now let me tell you how the headset performed in the various categories and features. Let's talk about the design of the headset. So I don't have a, a video shot, I have some photos I will show you here. Sorry, Tyrell, I know you're expecting a video. Maybe next time I will remember about that. Uh, as you can see, it's basically an Apple Vision Pro. So this is something that I will say a lot during this video, uh, because this headset is heavily inspired, not to say that it's a clone of the Apple Vision Pro. So it's like an Apple Vision Pro, but let's say with less, um, you know, the cool the design touch of Apple, it's more practical, it's more simple in its lines, but it's like a simplified version on the statics of the Apple Vision Pro. It's still cool to see, it's still cool to wear, I can make some cool pictures with it. Uh, so it's very good, uh, just lacks maybe that special touch that Apple usually has. Now let's get to into one of the things that interests you the most, which is the visuals. And I can say that this is one of the things on which Vivo Vision shines the most, because it has a binocular 8K display, which basically means 4K per eye, which means very high uh, image definition and resolution, no screen door effect, uh, great colors, maybe a bit less bright than AVP, but anyway, amazing. When you try the videos, the promotional videos that Vivo people show you, you are impressed because they feel really great. 
For me, the real drawback on the business loss is the real field of view. I say real because on paper, it seems that can be around the field of view of the Quest 3, maybe a bit less. But the fact is that the peripheral region of the lenses is affected by aberrations. It's, it's basically, you see things blurred. So you, you don't see along the full lens with clarity. So it is like one part of the vision is blurred. So you have a smaller perceived field of view. I think they need to fix it. I don't know if this fix it all by software, but this impacted a bit my experience. Anyway, if I looked straight in the center part of the lens, everything was amazing. Regarding the pastel, I think it's a bit less than the one of Apple Vision Pro. Uh, the definition was good. Uh, I could clearly see the people around me, read some text, etc. But I felt like the quality was a bit lower than the one of AVP. Maybe a bit higher than the one of Quest 3, but the ability to read the text in the current version of Quest 3 Pastor, I think it's higher than the one of Vivo Vision. So uh, I think Vivo can do something to improve the Pastor as well. But the biggest problem for me on the Pastor was the persistence, the motion blur. If I kept my head straight, the pasto looked very good. But the moment I started rotating my head, I start seeing things getting very blurred, so having persistency problems of the images. And then when I had my head straight uh, again, everything was great again. Uh, this, again, I don't know if it can be fixed by software or not, but this means that pasto is not great for experience I require you to move. It's only good for static experiences. Regarding audio, vivo, vision as two speakers in the lateral frames of the headset, you know, I'm not an audio expert. I cannot comment a lot on the audio quality, but for me, it was good enough to enjoy the experience and was loud enough that even if I was in a commercial center, I could hear very well the audio of the experience. So all in all, it was good enough for what I had to do. Talking about comfort, Vivo Vision is much lighter than the Apple Vision Pro. It's around 600 grams, and when wearing it, you don't have the same sensation of being super front heavy like the AVP. So Apple has a better design because it uses materials like aluminum glass, which are pretty cool, but also pretty heavy. The Vivo Vision is more practical, and so it's much lighter. You can wear it for more extended periods of time, you don't have the sensation of something destroying your forehead or your head or whatever. And after my 35 minutes of demo, I removed the headset. I had no red signs on my face. I'm lucky I couldn't try it for a long period of time to verify how it is using it for productivity, for instance. Uh, but I can say for the time I was using that when the demo, I was perfectly fine having it on my face. The only problem was some little disturbance on my nose because currently it's a headset made for Chinese people whose nose is not as big as mine. So uh, regarding wearing the headset, by the way, you put it on your face. There are some two straps that you have to uh, regulate. One goes on the top, another one on the nape. And uh, after that, you have your headset on and then you have to press the button a top button to automatically adjust the IPD. So comfort of this device, I think it's good and definitely greater than the one that Apple provides. The positional tracking of your vision was pretty okay. Uh, I was able to move my head and have the object tracked, but it had the problem of being slightly choppy, not completely fluid. I hope this gets fixed in the final version of the device. The hand tracking, I couldn't evaluate it exactly because I never saw the 3D model of the hand, but to do uh, gestures or to grab objects and move them, it was definitely good. The segmentation of the hand was not perfect. I could see my real hand cut out on the virtual world, but some errors on the cut. Some regions were too much cut, others too much generous uh, in the cut procedure, but still the tracking was in general good. And regarding eye tracking, while using the interfaces, I could always select the objects I was looking at. So this means that at least for UI usage, the eye tracking is definitely good. Vivo Vision uses a 
Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 Plus, which is the best Qualcomm chipset currently in the market. Uh, the performances during my demos were fine, uh, but still, Apple has an edge with its M2 chipset, which is more powerful. I could not evaluate the battery of the headset in just half an hour of demo, but the Vivo employees told me that the expected duration is around two hours and a half, which is enough to watch a movie or do something like this. The battery is external, connected with a circular connector to the headset, which is, again, very similar to Apple uh, Vision Pro. And uh, I cannot comment on how it is uncomfortable to have an external battery because all my demo was seated. And now let's speak about the operating system, which is the Origin OS Vision, uh, which is basically very similar to Vision OS. So uh, you have this button to which you can, uh, first of all, click it to have the main menu, which is identical to the one of the Apple Vision Pro. And you interact with it in the same way of the Vision Pro. You look at elements and you pinch with your hand to select them. Uh, you can swipe with your hand. So basically, if you saw something about the Apple Vision Pro, it's the same thing. And uh, after that, you have also a crown here that you can rotate to go from pass-through to virtual world. Again, this is how on the Apple Vision Pro is. And then uh, if you go in virtual reality, while you're on the menu, you can see an environment. Uh, and this is, uh, these environments are uh, of various types. And I would say that they are inspired by the one by Apple, but Apple ones, some of them are very astonishing. These ones were, in my opinion, very good, but still more simple. Let me tell you about some content that I've tried. So uh, the main thing probably uh, to try and decide that are the videos. I tried 2D videos, 3D videos, 180 degree VR videos, 360 videos. Uh, they all look great because of the resolution of the device. They look fluid, they look very defined, they're amazing. Uh, talking about photos, which is another good use case, I could see photos, 3D photos, and like those spatial memory that you can record with the Apple Vision Pro, you can do the same uh, with Vivo Vision. And also they say they're compatible with the media you create also with the iPhone. So basically, you can enjoy your multimedia, and that's it. Uh, you can record them with a the Vivo phone and then see it on the Vivo headset. Apart from that, I tried some small mixed reality experience. One was about some petals falling from the sky. I can touch them with my hands. Another one, there was a portal where from the virtual world, some ladies were playing music and dancing, and they were flying towards me, and I could touch one of their hands to see some petals flowing in the sky to summarize that uh, love is winning or something like that. Uh, then there was a little game when I had to move some gears to fix some machineries. Uh, and then there was something like beatable. I don't know if you say those guitar hero like games when there are some notes coming towards you and you have to press them at the right time in the right lane. All in all, Apart from the videos, which are really amazing, and the photos, which are good to show that you can record some memories, the demos were okay. -ish. They were all demos made by Vivo uh, because it's a new headset, so there are no developers working on it. I would say, anyway, I don't think any of this demo is compelling to buy a headset. I will never spend 1,400 US dollars so to virtually touch the hand of a flying girl. I mean, I will really be forever a long guy to do something like that. So I think that there is a lot to work on on the content side. And in my opinion, uh, Vivo would have better to join Android XR so to have a good category and catalog of content to offer. So summarizing, what are my final impressions on the Vivo Vision? I think it's a very good clone of the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, I cannot say it's original headset. They basically copied everything they could from Apple, including the name, which is called Vivo Vision. Uh, but they made a good copy of it because uh, the visuals are great. The audio can be loud. Uh, the tracking works. The pass-through has high definition. The audio is good. The videos are enjoyable in the device, etc., etc. So. It's a good device to use. 
Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, it's a bit rough in some things. Of course, the operating system of Apple is more fluid. The tracking on Apple is more fluid. The design is more classy on Apple, etc., etc. The other things that can work on uh, on this headset from the Discovery Edition to the final one. But I still think it's a very good device and it's more lightweight than the Apple Vision Pro is more comfortable. And also it's much cheaper because it costs, according to rumors, because the official price has never been set, it's around 1,400 US dollars. So less than half, almost a third of the Apple Vision Pro. So very, very good device. I came out with a good impression. Uh, I hope this device can also launch in the West because it can be a good competitor uh, of the more famous headset. Probably the thing that Vivo must work a lot on is content. Make this headset useful. Give content to users because I believe if they just rely on their own store, they may have a problem or lack of content, which may impact the usability of this device. And that's it for my impressions on the view of vision. I actually have also worked on a blog article with more than 5,000 words. So if you want to know all the details of this demo, of this headset, please check out the link in the description of the video and read this super long wall of text with everything I have to say about this device. And if you like this video, Please support me by liking it and by commenting it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel because so I can continue making amazing videos like this one. That's it for today. If you have comments or questions about the Viewer Vision, please ask them in the comments of the video. And we see you for the next one. Have a good day in VR. Bye bye.